I'm Sarah Vaughan, best-selling author of Anatomy of a Scandal and my new novel, Little Disasters. It's a psychological drama about the darkest reaches of motherhood, about judgment, and hopefully about the redemptive power of friendship. It starts when an affluent, experienced mother of three turns up at an A&E department um, on a Friday night with a baby with a bump to the back of her head and a story that doesn't add up. And the paediatrician on call happens to be a friend of hers, someone she's known for 10 years ever since they had their first children. And this Dr Liz has to make a professional judgment call and to try and work out what happens. And in doing so, she has to draw on her own childhood. The story is um, told from three viewpoints, um, from the doctor, Liz, um, who's written in the first person, uh, the Jess, the mother, who's in the first person, and her husband, Ed, who works long hours in, an, in a well-paid job, which means that Jess can stay at home. But in so doing, they fall into, into very distinct gender roles. And Ed realises that for 15 hours a day, he has no idea what's going on at home. Although it's partly set in hospital, um, it's really about the claustrophobia and the panic and the anxiety of those early days of, um, of babyhood um, and how that can disrupt your thinking um, and make you think in irrational ways. And I'm hoping, if this doesn't sound too bleak, that it's something that's really going to resonate at the moment when all of us are trying to navigate our own ways in our, in our homes in this lockdown time. Um, so I am meant to be in Waterstones Piccadilly, but obviously because of um, COVID-19, uh, that's impossible. Um, the date I was meant to go was, I think, the day before all the schools shut down. And I've got a doctor husband who's got COVID-19 patients, so it didn't seem very wise to be uh, to be travelling into London on the public transport in this way. So instead, I'm in my study and I'm going to have to give you three favourite novels um, that I've chosen here. I actually found it really difficult to think of three favourite novels. I found it completely impossible. So what I've given you is three books um, that have either really affected my writing of Little Disasters or have um, just taught me a lot about writing in general. So my first choice is Jane Eyre. Now I wouldn't say this is even my favourite classic novel. I think for that I would have to go um, with Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen um, because that taught me so much about satire and who doesn't want to be Lizzie Bennet basically. Um, but Jane Eyre was probably the novel that had, has had the biggest impact on me. Now it sounds really precocious but my mum gave me this novel to read when I was nine because she'd read it when she was nine and this is actually the 1982 edition which is proof of that fact. And of course, a lot of it went right over my head at that age. But we had just moved from a 1960s semi to a detached Victorian house. And I had the bedroom in the attic. Um, everybody else was on the first floor. And there were two box rooms. And I was convinced that Bertha Rochester lived in the box room next door and was going to kill me in the night. It wasn't helped by the fact that my mum had bought a yellow paper sun. This was the 80s after. Um, and this hung outside my bedroom. And obviously, I thought that was the flames. In fact slightly reminds me of the colour was this colour and it really reminds me of this sense of conflagration here. Anyway, The Mad Woman in the Attic is such a seminal trope of Victorian fiction and it's such a strong potent idea that when I went off to university to read English I remember reading a feminist literary text on that name which analyses 19th century um, uh, literature um, according to this idea of, of mad women and, and, and angels. And of course, you can also read Jane Eyre from a Freudian perspective in which Bertha Rochester is, is Jane's id. Um, so when I was writing Little Disasters, it, it, this, this image of, of this sort of uncontained madness um, that, 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 that in Victorian era would be locked away was so pertinent that uh, Jess has a bedroom um, in the attic. And of course, the book club uh, reads Jane Eyre as their book club book, although not many of them admit to actually having read it. My next choice uh, is Patricia Highsmith's The Talented Mr Ripley. Now, I have to admit that, like many people, I saw the Matt Damon film. And I didn't actually read this till a couple of years ago when I realised that I'd veered into crime fiction with Anatomy of a Scandal. And I was absolutely blown away. What's so fascinating about it is that Ripley is um, a really amoral character. He's a very charming sociopath or psychopath, I think. And yet... In reading this, you're really on his side and you really want him to get away with his crimes. And I was just skimming through it earlier and there's there's a bit, of, I think, on page 126 of this edition where he's about to be found out. And you're willing him not to be found out, so much so that you actually condone what he does next. And then that's a really uncomfortable read because you're complicit almost in what he's done because he's been so beguiling. And yes, there are sort of twists and it's really tightly plotted and it's written in quite spare. She's quite economical. It's a slight you know, it's like novel compared to our 400 page ones now. It's, what is it? It's 
260 but she conveys so much with that and it and it taught me so much about um yeah about um writing in a in a closed first person i suppose which is also something which my third choice did and that's hillary mantel's bring up the bodies now i loved wolf hall as well you can see i bought quite rare for me to buy uh hardbacks and the daisies came up i love them so much i did um and i've got the mirror and the light but i haven't yet had time to read it but um i found bring up the bodies a bit more accessible than wolf hall and i found the cromwell in it, in it a bit more human and a bit more compassionate i think because you hear about his daughter a lot um what i really loved about this is again it's written it's written in the third person um present tense um and it taught me a lot about as a writer about writing as if you're in a character's head without writing in the first person and you're so seduced by the Cromwell in this that you know I always fell in love with him if that doesn't sound um, trite and then there's a point at which you realise quite how ruthless he is and it, he is determined to um, find people um, to prosecute to prove Anne Boleyn's um, adultery and so he doesn't actually care if they're actually guilty of the adultery itself and there's this fantastic quote that influenced me so much that I that I kept thinking about it when I was writing Anatomy and I used it as my epilogue. He needs guilty men, so he has found men who are guilty, though perhaps not guilty as charged. And with that with that couple of lines, she you completely change your opinion of, or I completely changed my opinion of Cromwell, and I felt that I'd been seduced and I'd been beguiled and I'd been betrayed. And I think that's very, very clever, and I can't wait to read her next one. Anyway, that's my choice of three novels and I hope you enjoy them and little disasters.